What are you doing out here so early? Looking at the bug. Well, good morning. Good morning. I was just getting through my 16th cup of coffee. You know, I can't work. Yeah, I was uh, thinking about some things and looking at the bug. And I was thinking, I know you have a lot of fiberglassing to do. And I really want to learn fiberglassing. Huh. Well, I do indeed have a lot of fiberglassing to do, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if what I could share would account as professional advice, but uh, sure, yeah, you got a lot of uh, material and et cetera, get well, those fenders put in place. Well, there's been a lot of comments from a lot of professional body people, and they've been giving you a lot of great tips and tricks, so I figured why not? Maybe I could learn a new skill. After I taught myself YouTube editing the whole nine this past year, I'm ready for a new challenge. Well. Because my drone isn't going to arrive for a few days. <laughs> ooh, drone footage. So what do you think? Well, I think I have two things to say to that. First, today's episode is brought to you by Cosmoline. Cosmoline. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about, then watch the other video. Watch Jamie's G part four. Also, speaking of viewers, advice and input, excuse me while I grab this thing, Mr. Bill. Bill, thanks. So Bill said, hey, what if you just took the drip rail and edged it down with maybe a vent there? Page one. Thank you. Same detail, but with a porthole. Well, if you know, I'm definitely going with those heart windows. But I agree that changing that drip route to flow like he pictured is the move. It really adds something to the dimension of that and that. So yeah, a nice graceful slope. I think the decision's been made. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about adventures in fiberglass. I'm gonna go change. I got a special suit just for you. You're gonna love it. <laughs> Nice suit. <laughs> While I personally think that this is overkill, I uh, think it'll be very safe. I've never even used one of these for fiberglass except for sanding, but if you get any of this crud on you, you know, it's, gonna, it's going to get in your clothes and turn plastic hard, so might as well just safer than sorrier. Eh? Yeah. I kind of feel like a Oompa Loompa. Yes, our interpretive dance will follow <laughs> once we get into the action. So, exhibit A, fiberglass cloth. Itchy stuff. So, it's uh, fairly uh, inert at this point because it's a woven thing, but when the real trouble starts is if you sand it, it becomes these tiny little fiberglass shards that you get in your skin. It's super itchy. Ouch. Yeah. But basically, it's kind of like I've used this term before, making a lasagna. So you got this big thing here. There's a lot of different ways. If you were laminating a surfboard, you would use a full sheet and you would laminate it, right? But for what we're doing, we're just trying to piece in this one strip where the two fenders join. So I'm going to cut a strip of fiberglass mat, right? And just that way it's manageable. Can you dig it? Mm -hmm. You want to try? Mm -hmm. To just make all just strips. I think so. These are some really big scissors. Yes, those are pro grade, professional grade upholstery scissors. Should I cut more? Oh, wow. I don't know. Should you? <laughs> Told you. It's like, I mentioned lasagna. This is like a cooking show. I love lasagna. Yes. So. so now you got all your noodles, right? Now we're going to put on some rubber gloves because even though I think the suits are overkill, these are going to be. A lifesaver. And I don't mean the candy. I'm gonna mix up some of this. We got all this good stuff from Evercoat. All the filler, all the fiberglass, all the resin, etc. So Jamie, you had asked, Jamie had asked, well, how does this happen, right? So it's a catalyzed system. That's the catalyst. That's what makes it go off. This stuff won't dry or harden. It has to be catalyzed to set up. I put down this plastic. That's going to be our mixing palette. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can continually clean this 
you don't want anything that's porous because it's going to absorb all this liquid. This is a resin, polyester resin, actually. They call it fiberglass resin, but it's polyester type of stuff. Still going to see if it had any ingredients, but you can mix up any amount you of this. You don't even have on your glasses. You wouldn't be able to see it anyway. <laughs> There's a thing with acting, right? <laughs> nobody knows. I could just I could be using prop glasses. I mean, nobody knows what they're actually working or not. Right. Could be the fashion. Facts. No, that was me. <laughs> so you can mix up as much of this as you want at a time, but the bigger volume, the faster it tends to set off. It's like a chemical reaction thing, like a little flame versus a big flame. It's like mm -hmm. a fairly temperate today. It's not cold, nor is it hot. So uh, they give this size tray in another uh, setup. So I just tend to use them like this and do about that much, about a half a tray full. But uh, the real thing is how much of that you put in there. There is a ratio. I don't remember what it is. Here, let me just put that right there. How's that look? Perfect. Infusion. <laughs> You don't even get paid to promote that. It's just good stuff. They're an awesome company. So there's like, I think it's like a 10 milliliters or something. It's like a tiny little, like almost a miniature shot glass. So you measure that to that in a perfect world, like if you're building something really important. But uh, I've learned like a couple drops, like maybe about that much, will set it off in some hour or two. But I like to put a little bit more in, especially when we're going to try to work through this pretty quickly. Uh, maybe it's not as strong, maybe it's more brittle, I don't know, but it works. You know, if you were building an airplane, it would like have to be all specked out perfectly. Or but a spaceship. For, or a spaceship. I just put that in there and mix it up. What do you mix it with? You can mix it with pretty much anything you want to get messed up. Uh -huh. uh, if I use a brush, it'll absorb it, but one of these little things tends to work. Look, it's going to change color. See how it's getting darker already? Mm -hmm. So there's uh, all different colors, especially when you get into the body fillers. There's some red, there's some blue. This one's clear, but you'll see this get visibly darker as it starts to catalyze. Color, see how it's getting visibly darker? Mm -hmm. uh, and once the color looks even, it's just about there. Um, the more you mix it, like most things, the more even the distribution of catalysts will be. But in this informal setting, as long as it looks pretty close to the same color all the way through the batch, you're ready to go. And I'm going to estimate we have a working time of about 15 minutes because of the temperature and that amount of catalyst. So we'll see. Thing is, if this starts to get gelatinous, if it gels up, dump it, clean everything, and start over with another batch. Why? Why do you have to do that? You're going to see. Once it kicks, like sometimes when I'm doing body filler and you come in, hey, I want to do ABC. It's like, no, no. The chemical reaction waits for no one. <laughs> Once it starts, it cannot be undone. <laughs> I mean, maybe there's a retardant kind of spray or something, but for this amount of material, if it goes south on you, clean it up before it hardens and move on. I'm working on my angles, everyone. Angle of the dangle. Cool, so I that looks pretty it, good. I see it, me. <laughs> That's like some next dimension stuff right there. <laughs> Be careful. You could send us down a whole Rick and Morty episode <laughs> with that move. All right, so see, this is why I use the plastic on the bottom, right? We're going to take one of these, and uh, I'm just going to set this up. And this is going to be our mixing palette from here on in. So there will always be material on the platter. So you get this, and you want to take most of the resin out of it. See? Kind of dry it out. And I scoop it up. Nice and wet. Just put it on the fender. See, I got a couple screws in there as a pin. And once we get one layer set, We'll pull that pin out. So again, we got the material on this plate. I'm going to lay that in there, and that's the process over and over till you use up the material. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but again, I found that this works for me. I'm going to double this one up 
So I'm working on a shorter thing right at the end of the fender here. And a little more material is going to be more stronger. I'm going to put that fold at the bottom. So it's a little bulkier. See, I'm just laying it on reasonably quick. I'm going to tap it down with a brush as we progress. First, we're going to get all the catalyzed stuff in gear. We have visitors. Yep. So our <laughs> roof repair saga continues. <laughs> you mean you don't know how to weld together, my roof together? To weld your roof together? I got Ian? more important things to do. You see, this is the desert. It hardly ever rains. It's just when it does rain, it pours. So we're going to build cars. We're going to let the construction guys do construction. All right. That simple. So another one. I'm going to go down the lane, pin it to the next screw, like so. Just get it kind of, you can see where it's not making contact. There's little air bubbles in there. So that's what the brush is going to accomplish. It's going to tamp out as much air as possible. And you see all these little fibers that are starting to gather. Each time I spread it, this will be a perfect little drop of uh, material at the end of it if there's any hollows I want to fill up. Because uh, the perfect laminated thing would have zero gaps between the material, zero air bubbles. They have these uh, like vacuum bags they put over things that like compresses it. But again, this quick hand laid procedure will work for our fenders. Want to try? Yep. So I lay this down. Correct. You got two spreaders. Move that on top and put your hands right in it. I mean, it's the quickest way. Oh, really? Yeah. That's why we're wearing gloves. Ooh, yeah. yeah. It does like get like. Yeah, you'll know. It'll heat up too. Oh, really? Yeah. Kind of like feel a cast. It get warm. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, plaster cast will heat up too, but that's not catalyzed. Well, it is sort of, but not with the same chemical reaction. So the race here is to use that up. Is that before, good? Yeah, it looks great. As soon as, yeah, see how it changed color? So uh -huh. just screed off that little bit. I pick it up. I usually put the spatula under it, grab it with your old fingers, and lay it on. Where should I put it? Wherever you like. This is your project. Anywhere? Yeah, All right. Yep, you oh could tamp gosh. it down with the spreader if you were trying to keep your hands a little bit cleaner. That's so satisfying. Right? Yep, set up your next one. Exactly. And you'll just come to a flow where you'll start to learn how fast this sets up, how much prep you need to do in advance, and see how it absorbs it. Mm -hmm. Since it's all full, screed it off. Set it down. Screed, screed. Exactly. Sweet. Is that okay? Yeah. Now should I dump this sure, out? Sure, pour it out. Just right here? Pour it on it and then just screed it off. Yep, exactly. Yeah, the whole thing is we're just trying to avoid making a mess and spilling on the floor, but on that surface, anything goes. That's your palette. And then you just keep on glassing it until you kind of get the shape. Yeah, you're that trying you're to make for. it look. I mean, we don't want a two inch thick fender in the end, but we're trying to get at least the thickness of these two. There's, there's different layers and thicknesses in the material as they make it, but with this kind of home base repair, we want it probably twice as thick as the original pieces. Uh, Again, okay. with the filler and everything, we're looking for a nice uh, height of the final bodywork that just flows into the car. It doesn't look like two pieces mashed together. Okay. Do you think we got enough juice for one more? I think so. Yeah, set up one more. Even if it's a little bit dry, we have enough material there that's saturated. You'll see how we get in with the brush. It's going to pat it all down. Oh, all right. Cool. Yeah. Then I like to take the leftover and look for a problem area, right? A low spot. So you see this shelf here is pretty substantial. So I'll just set that nice thing right in there. 
And then just as it's kicking off, I have acetone here and a brush. So I try to get the acetone out of it. This is the Bob Ross moment. And then every little fiber that's sticking up, you'll want to sand off because you want the next layer to be laminated perfectly smooth. But if you take this, see just as it's really sticky, you can push it down, you can push all the air out of it, and then all the little fibers will lay down. But you store the brush in the acetone so it doesn't turn plastic hard. Ah! <laughs> Okie dokie. Jazz hands. Maybe you can look and see if you like the frame. Yeah, yeah grab your tray. Fill out about halfway. Cool. And just start dropping that in. You don't really want to squirt it hard, just drip, drip, drip. Now get the flow. Put a little more in here, see about how it starts to come out. You don't want to, you know, douse it. Is that good? No, keep dripping. Squirt a little bit. A little more. All right, cool. I'll take your spatula. Not mix it with the emphasis being like pulling it. Yeah, exactly. Right off the edge. It's just that easy. No sparks. No heat. That's uh, one of the cool things about fiberglass, right? This is like uh, paper mache almost. Yeah. yeah. And you can even stack them as long as you don't lose the, uh, you know, uh, one piece against the other scenario. All right. This all looks great. I'll be back when we're ready to paint the car. Montage. <laughs> I'm going to have a beverage. Because are you trying to get these this yep. even? That's the whole idea. You're looking to grab on the black fender where I sanded it back. You're looking to grab from that scuffed area. So just like this, this means nothing for the fiberglass. It's all in this area from there. Ah, there. okay. So on the gray, this yeah. part, yeah. Yeah, because that's all scuffed up, and that gives, it's called putting a tooth in it. So it's all scoured, so the material grabs. Okay, cool. And I cannot smell that fiberglass stuff. Right. This mask really works. No, you can paint cars with that mask. It's a uh, design for that. Like right now, right here, can you do a couple layers on top of each other? Yep. Or do you suggest only doing one layer at a time? No, you can bulk, you can build that whole surface up. Okay. Yeah. That's the, basically the only parameter is if it becomes too tall for your finished surface or it starts falling off on the ground, then you're ah, done. Ah, okay, gotcha. With the rest of this uh, resin, I'm going to do a little something that will help us build up that last bit of uh, imperfection in the matchup. Okay. One last thing uh, is as the batch is pretty much ending and we're out of other stuff to prep, I'll take this and just chop it up, right? And then uh, just start mixing it and see it'll just come apart. It'll just turn almost to like a kitty hair filler of your own. See, look at all that. That is a powerful ally in filling imperfect surfaces. So, yeah, that's the end of it. I'm just going to try to keep my hands out of the goo. but And then just slap it on there? Well, this handle's nice and clean, so I'm not going to put any resin on this at all. Well, sure, we're going to treat this like body filler now. It's not the lasagna thing. It's just... Well, I saw you saw that blob I put there, right? Uh-huh. Same idea. See, look, now it's nice and pasty. It's not going to be runny. And you apply it. So, yeah, right. Oh, when I'm doing fiberglass, a lot of times I won't even need gloves because you can keep the handles clean and you just work it like it's uh, something you don't want to mess around with. You don't even touch it. So, see how again we have that big deep ledge from the mismatch. It's going to fill it with this. Only the next layer will improve on it. So, if you want to grab that brush with the acetone trick and start patting this down. Just like this? Yeah, you're trying to push down the uh, the hairs that are standing up. See, you got all that. Just the, the flatter, the better. Oh, okay. And you'll also see uh, if there's air bubbles, maybe right here. Mm -hmm. So you can hit on that. See, look, the color changes. Now oh, the air's okay. out of it. Yeah. 
How does that look? Lovely. Now that brush, swish it around good in the acetone to dilute that resin. Yeah, again, just a little bit of housekeeping, right? So all this stuff that's standing up, the fibers, is going to be like sharp edges and it'll mess up your next batch. It'll stick to it. So just kind of lay that out, clean up your surface, and we're on to the next. Wow. <laughs> what? That was quite the left. <laughs> so we're going to do interpretive dance. Ooh, that's going to be our thumbnail right there in front of the car. So what's what's next, Professor Ian? Next is a liberal application of kitty hair. This is fiberglass long strand reinforced body filler. I mean, talk about exciting stuff. Basically the same materials we've been working with. And as I created that slurry at the end, this is almost the same thing, but maxi professional grade. Ooh. Yeah. I don't think any kitties were harmed in the production of this. <laughs> but it works great. So that basically is like what we just did on the car, except it's already mixed with the solvent or not solvent, the accelerator stuff. And now you just toss it on there and it dries. You're, you're just right there. I mean, you got a B minus on that statement. An A plus would have been, oh, we yeah. add the catalyst. And oh, then we add the catalyst. Okay. You're, you're on a path. I mean, for your first lesson. I so mean, you have to add the catalyst to that as well. Got it. You know what? The next time you ask me that question, guess what I'm going to get? Learning curve. A plus. The learning baby. curve. That's right. But as I mentioned, different colors, different consistencies. This is a catalyst as well, but this is more of a cream paste. And you'll want to mix it up a little bit before you uh, put it out of the tube because sometimes it does separate. But see how it's blue and it's not liquid like that. It's more of a cream paste. So that probably could set this off mixed appropriately, but with the cooler temps, I'm going to go with about that much, maybe even just a little bit more because uh, I like to set it off quick. I don't know if the strength values are really that important in a little fender on a car, but this works for me. I'm when sure people will chime in and tell you. Oh yeah. Any pro grade, <laughs> if you're doing insurance body repair, this is chemistry. Like there's a formula. Otherwise it's just bunk. So yeah, this is for hobbyists and mad scientists, but the, uh, End result for me has worked. So there's that. And with this Evercoat, they uh, provided these cool uh, palettes with the paper that peels off layer after layer. So I've noticed with this really thick material, and I tend to push it around pretty rough. Sometimes the paper will tear, but so far, day five working on this palette, it's holding together wonderfully. So just like the liquid resin in that tub i'm working on the edges trying to mix everything evenly then i'm going right through the big blob in the center trying to get that catalyst the blue material evenly distributed mixed right in with the older body fillers you were really uh intent on squeezing pinholes out of it trying to get any air bubbles out but this newer material i don't even ever see pinholes or air bubbles in the finished stuff the earlier fillers were just prone to having little bubbles. And after the project was painted, sometimes that air potentially could uh, heat up and cause paint blisters. Oh no. But with the newer materials, I don't, I like, like pinholes almost, it almost doesn't exist. I mean, there will be the final little, before you prime it, check, but it's so, so minimized nowadays. It's awesome. See, I'm, I have no intention of even touching the material. That's why there's no gloves, because I'm hands off on this portion of it. Everything is by the handle. Because this will get you pretty sticky too. And I'm sure it's not good for the bare skin. But yeah, that looks pretty well mixed. You can see how it changed color, just like the other stuff. Uh, it's a little more difficult to distribute the catalyst in the kitty hair product than the regular like lightweight filler. 
just because it's just much bulkier. There's a lot more going on in the mix. But yeah, the paper held together just fine on this set. And uh, I'm gonna apply it on the back fender. And uh, there's three layers of fiberglass matte on that transition, but it's still really low. So this stuff is gonna be a nice blast of filler to mediate that difference. Then when the fender unbolts, all the finish work underneath will get glassed in as well. So that's why this stuff is strong, but definitely not structural strong. So again, the structure will be backed up from underneath. Are we ready? Let it happen, Captain. So working with gravity, I'm just going to set this stuff on the car. I don't want to glue it to the steel body. See that gap? This whole fender is going to unbolt for the time being. In the end, it'll be fused on, but I want to work on the underside of this without having to flip the whole car over. So pretty much just using gravity, I'm going to shovel this into position. The uh, fiberglass on the car isn't hundred percent set at the moment. So I don't want to disturb that. That's why the idea is just look, it's slowly oozing down like the blob. And if you're not hip to your monster movie history, let me say, you gotta watch the blob. Ooh. Another movie we should watch. And I think it was like The Blob Returns. I think it was like a couple where they just, you know, totally, oh, it's a great idea. Let's just capitalize on everything Blob. You know what? They didn't have a Blob action figure. That's what the world needs. I mean, they had Silly Putty, right? Why not? The Blob. First. You heard it here first, kid. The Blob action figure. I would think it would have looked like a lot, like maybe like Job of the Hut. Or like this. Look, here's your first one. I mean, this is the very first prototype. It's highly toxic, but look, <laughs> you and your blob can be friends. You can build body panels. Don't take it to the Arctic because it doesn't do very well in super cold weather. But, I mean, just look at it. So see how I'm just using this spatula in a very informal manner? but it's building the bridge between the two surface heights. I got a little fiberglass picked up right there. So that's definitely an imperfection I'll have to work out once it's dry. See if I pull it, it's gonna wrinkle up the whole show. Oh yeah. I'm just yeah. gonna let it live. I'm gonna let it stay there, let it cure, and then fix it with the sander later. That's always something to consider too. Like I said, if this stuff is all curing together, heck yeah, it's gonna be a nice even catalyst and heat distribution through it but i want to pull the whole assembly apart by one wrong stroke of the brush as it were i see why i didn't get to do that part <laughs> it would be easy to just pull the whole project apart with I one see, scrape. i see why you are like yes. yeah i'll do this part you well the gimbal. i'm sure in nursing you saw with those demonstrations and then uh -huh. it was hands-on Definitely. I trained a lot of nurses. So, so this, this is the demonstration for it. Because I knew with the other part, with the mat, oh, you're going to nail it. Like, no problem. And you did. It was perfect. But with this, you're going to be a little more delicate. And again, you see, I'm just using a, uh, I guess you call it a putty knife or whatever. It's not even a proper spreader for the body filler that they give you. Because it's just, it's a real first application loose scenario so yeah i got a little weirdness right here i'm just gonna fill that and let it be a little bit tall and again i'll just break that down with the sander once it's hard and finished all right now i'm gonna clean this up with the other spreader get rid of this material that's on its way mix up a new batch cool so yeah, that's one of the rad things about this. Uh, like we have to clean up the palette continually with the fiberglass resin and matte. Not the case with this. I got a little breakthrough on that sheet. So we'll just literally turn the page and start fresh. I can't believe I didn't see that comment where somebody said something about yeah. your antics. Yeah, it was in one of the older videos, I think. Oh, really? I'm all about the antics. 
Right. So I was just telling Ian that uh, that's a comment I missed, somebody giving him grief over his antics. But our vibe is we like to play and create. The last thing I ever want is another job. Right. Come so on. yes, we both are proficient at adulting, but adulting is sometimes kind of boring. Well, you adulted, you raised children and did the whole thing. I was an RN for 17 years, bachelor's degree, grad school dropout, and I'd much rather be playing than that. So that's Ian and I's whole vibe. We, we met basically on a playground. <laughs> and I worked my butt off to be as informal as I am. Right. <laughs> and, right? So it's like, it's not fun and games. It took a lot of, a lot of blood, sweat, and fears to get and into if, this. Position. And if you're not having fun, at least sometimes in your life, like change you're, it, you're you doing it wrong. Right. Switch and it up. Yeah. You're just doing it wrong. And that's okay. Cause we all get caught up. Well, even us in this perfect world scenario, right? We still got our stresses. You just got to roll with it. Oh Lord. The dog, the house, the Poor whole Lil. But Lil was hanging out playing last night. She was moving mm -hmm. around. They were playing hide the toy from the other dog scenario. It was yeah, really cool she's to see. Better. She was moving on that leg. She don't even care if there's stitches or staples. She was like party time. Mm -hmm. So see, I went a little bit bigger with this mix. I see That's that. That's about as maxed out as I can get on this board. But I've been having some experiences with it. Um, the worst thing you want to do is dump this on the floor because then you got a bunch of ugly grit in there. But again, I going to use a liberal application of catalyst just to set this off. You should make a face. Okay, that's the, this is way too much catalyst. We're looking for trouble. <laughs> Wait, that doesn't look like a face. That looks yeah, like it does. Some, okay, not from this angle. Looks like a smiley face. <laughs> it does look like a smiley face, I agree. <laughs> You know, you've been wearing a respirator all day and you're still giddy. <laughs> Amateur. Oh my. So see the whole concept here is mix it up. Get it to the nice even tone. Catalyzed kitty hair splendor and spread it. So with the videos, I like to uh, have the, you know, Everybody gets their cookie moment at the end where something really dramatic changes, but this is the process. Uh, it did change. The fenders look much more complete. They're fleshed out. They're strong. Uh, we got a great concept for that drip rail. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Thank you, Mr. Bill. For real. I'm using that. Love it. Uh, people were a little bit concerned about mounting the heart van window flush on the surface. Girly man. Come on. You think we're just going to leave it? stock i got plans i got ideas right. so yeah there's a lot to come ideas with the doors suicide doors you don't even know you can have to hold on for that episode hold on to your hats kids so yeah i think this is pretty much gonna wrap it for this event how long are we into this pretty long huh i don't know a while yeah we got time lapse Hopefully Jamie's editing prowess really steps into this. We're doing a two camera and other soundtrack at the same time. So woohoo. Yep. And Let's drone footage, drone oh, footage way. coming. Yep. So I guess we're going to go out on this fantastic scene where my new favorite toy, the blob action figure confronts the front fender. So if this wasn't all catalyzing at the same time, if it had dried, you have to sand it and prep it. But this stuff is like heated, it's happening. So I'll just separate it from the steel portion of the car and just move it down the lane. Again, without putting pressure too much on the work below. We're gonna have to build out the front of this fender a bit but we're also going to need strength. So this is going to affect both 
the strength factor so we can work without these pins in it and bring up the surface so you can see right through here as i was using the uh other spreader see we're basically looking for ah. this degree of blend somewhere in that range I and see. i'll leave it tall with the kitty hair for now because you can always just sand it down right so it's a pretty rough imperfect surface because this has so many solids in it but the idea is uh, the least amount of lightweight filler possible because that has the least amount of structure in it before we sign off i want to give a shout out to uh your friend scratch he just started a youtube channel in fact he did today 4 p.m I today think. and i'm gonna link him in our video and he's part of our community cool cat just so you guys know check him out support him he's really really talented and he's just getting started wait till you see you probably know of his pinstriping and stuff from some yeah. of the projects we worked on but uh next level cool dude super knowledgeable just uh he knows his business yeah you guys have known each other since when 1990 something we were just children and None you guys worked in the hair. valley on the custom car i think he moved to la in 98 yeah the whole scene like and that, he's yeah. been in some of the episodes of ian's television show so yeah we're a custom family we all hang out we all support each other everybody's doing art it's cool that now it can go viral and into the metaverse. And he really is doing art. Look at his head scratcher car. Freaking, I mean, yeah. Space Junkie and the head scratcher should hang out sometime. Yeah. That car is radical. Mm. Super, super gnarly. Yeah, so check him out. What else you got, Ian? Well, that's the spread on this one. Now it's time to take a little lunch break because this is gonna get hot. We got some material layered now, but uh, you can see how this is starting to become the mutated Ford VW Fusion Fender right now. It's so cool. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Oops, see, I'm pushing the, uh -oh. pushing the mat. We don't wanna do that. So we're about maxed out with our capacity of construction for the time being.